Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. I am going to pause as we welcome in our participants to the webinar today. Welcome. Thank you for joining us for our next edition of our 49er Industry Chat. My name is Noemi Guevara, the Director of Alumni Engagement. We thank you for joining us today. Before we start, just want to let you know the session has been recorded and it will be um, added to our video library on our website at csuob.edu forward slash alumni. Also, I encourage you to submit any questions throughout our chat today using our Q&A box located above or below your screen. Uh, and to get started, it's my honor to introduce our guest speaker for today with her presentation, Public Accounting Numbers and So Much More uh, with Bella Wang. With more than 20 years of public accounting experience, Bella's practice includes tax, tax planning and consulting for large and mid-sized domestic and international businesses, as well as corporations, partnerships, and high net worth individuals. She works closely with business owners and investors specializing in international tax consideration strategy and compliance on inbound and outbound, outbound transactions. Bella is an in-demand speaker presenting various topics pertaining to new tax laws and tax planning strategies. In 2021 and 2022, she was recognized by the Los Angeles Business Journal as one of the one of the leaders of Influence Minority CPAs. Bella is a member of the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, the California Society of Certified Public Accountants, and a board member of the Asian Pacific CPA Association. Please join me in welcoming today's 49er Industry Chat host, Bella Wang. Thank you so much, Bella, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure to be here today. We're so excited to get to hear about your journey and a little bit about your job and the future. Uh, but to kick us off today, and I know you'll be sharing a PowerPoint with us today, uh, just a little bit about you know your your journey, if you want. Uh, you know why why Cal State Long Beach, and then we could kick off your presentation. So right after I graduated from high school, I actually went to uh, UC Irvine for a year and I was studying math. I really love number. Uh, I like, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting. I like geometry, I like uh, calculus. And I always thought that I'm gonna be a math major, but, you know, after studying uh, uh, UC Irvine for a year, I feel like that's not really what I want to do for my career. I want to more involved in the business and my end, she's a CPA, she encouraged me to just start trying to like uh, a few accounting classes to start. And, you know, I, I heard a lot of great thing about Cal State Long Beach. The business school is one of the best. So that's why, and I, I live in Cerrito, which is not only like 50 miles away. So right. I choose to uh, transfer to Cal State Long Beach. And I feel like that's the best decision I ever made in my life. Wonderful. And I think we'll get into a little bit more details about, about your time in Cal State Long Beach, but would you like to queue up your deck and we could start your presentation? Yes, absolutely. So let me um, do that. Sorry, let me try that one more time. So make sure. There you go. So um, I'm going to start with the, um, the table of content. So first, I'm going to give you a little overview about our firm is Wines and also share my career path. How do I end up at Wines? And also, uh, you know, most of the time when we, especially with a new graduate, they will ask like why you choose public accounting versus the private why you choose tax versus audit and why wine. So I'm going to go over all those, my experience, why I end up in uh, where I am right now. And I'm going to share my achievements and also looking forward, what's public accounting going to look like in next couple of years in the future. And I'm going to share some final, final thoughts. 
So let me start with our firm. Uh, our firm Wines is Wines Inc. was established in 1926, and we are uh, based in Long Beach. We were always in uh, downtown Long Beach. We just moved uh, two years ago, exactly two years ago, July 2020, during pandemic, to the new office by the Kilroy Airport. But we are always in Long Beach. Uh, you know, uh, I would say 60% of our partner uh, manager or uh, Cal State Long Beach alumni. And uh, so, and we have been uh, recognized being the best place to work for so many years. Uh, so this is just the, uh, our profile. Uh, I'm just quickly go through the slide because I also have a video about the firm that I would like to share with you. Uh, so let me go there. I mean, I know you'll get into it a little bit further, but um, maybe you could share with us how your journey, you know, to wines, um, how you got there. Yeah, so after I graduated from Cal State Long Beach, and I would say that, um, you know, I really encourage for the uh, sophomore or uh, junior uh, students, uh, you start your, you know, kind of plan out your career while you are, are in school. So, you know, try to join those mid the firm nine, uh, you know, and get some internship. Uh, for, for From my experience, I didn't do any internship when I was in Cal State Long Beach. So after I graduate, I, I actually um, spent a couple months just to find a job. But I did end up finding my first job in a CPA firm in Irvine. Uh, so it's a 40 people firm. Um, they, their focus is actually on audit. So, and it's very specialized. They do a lot of governmental audit. So most of their clients are government like cities, uh, nonprofit or government agency. So I spent uh, two years there. And also at a time you need to have two years of audit experience to get certified, to get the CPA license. So I you know, I worked there for two years and I got my CPA license. And at the time I want to try something different. So I, I want to try tax and that's why I changed job. I moved from the first one to the second one. The second firm is a lot smaller. It's only like 10 people firm. We have two partner, but they only do tax. Uh, so I get to learn a lot of uh, new thing about the tax, uh, you know, just from the compliance uh, and the planning standpoint, but it's very, they also very specialized. Uh, they do, they they focus mostly on real estate. So uh, working there for another two years, uh, I want more uh, exposure. I want to try different things, especially working with different clients in, in, in different industry. And then so through the uh, recruiter, I got a chance to interview with the uh, partner and the manager, senior manager at Wines. And after the interview, I really like the firm. I like the culture and that's how I end up here. Wonderful. Okay, so let me just share a video. I think this will be a, help you to uh, understand our firm. Yeah. We have you could hear it. I can't see it though. Set of services, which includes advisory, tax, Everybody. audit, and assurance. Our client base spans throughout mm -hmm. the region, yes. throughout the state, across the country, and worldwide. Our clients are small to large sized businesses uh, with the majority concentrated in the middle market. The firm was founded in 1926. We have a strong reputation in the community and a focus on giving back to the communities we serve. Wines offers a number of advisory services, including mergers and acquisitions, value acceleration, outsource CFO, and cybersecurity. The firm's commitment to these advisory services is part of everything we do, from recruiting and onboarding to serving our clients. Our top priority moving forward is to add more advisory services to respond to our clients' ever-changing needs. Our tax practice is very robust. We do uh, the full gamut of services, everything from planning, compliance, uh, strategizing, choice of entity. And we do so for a variety of industries. We do nonprofit sector as well as for-profit business, every entity type, LLC, partnership, corporations, and high net worth individuals. We take time right from the get-go to listen to our clients and truly understand their needs. This allows us to go above and beyond the normal financial statement audit. The most important thing is to know who they are and what's going on in their world. 
It's not one size fits all approach. We really have to find out what the details are. What are their goals? What are their specific scenarios with their family, with their business, and what are their plans for the future? And then we tailor our approach toward what their needs are. So Wines is a regional firm, yet we have this boutique slash concierge feel. Wines offers our clients a higher level of partner involvement than they get from other firms. We also have a culture that values our people, which has resulted in excellent employee retention and morale. Our philosophy is if we take care of our teams, they in turn take even better care of our clients. We have a solid team consistently looking at the account, the business, the industry, so they really intimately get to know the client as well. You build that relationship over years, you're not having to retrain staff year after year. It's just a huge win for us and for the client. So everybody wants to work for a firm that appreciates them and acknowledges them. And we have done a fantastic job developing an amazing culture, which allows people not only to grow professionally, but also have a personal life. When I first started at Wines, I came in as an entry-level staff position, and now I'm standing here today as a manager, and I can honestly say that I had no idea I would come this far in this short period of time. I love the people here. Our staff is our number one asset. Wonderful. And I know initially you talked about, you know, the advice of getting uh, students to do internships. Does Wines do internships? Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to your Wines family. We do. So we, we offer internships. So um, the other, when I go into other slide talking about the uh, different program we offer, one is called Summer Leadership. So Summer Leadership, we usually do it in the second week of July. And then we, you know, we hire people from the, um, the mid of front event on the campus. And then we will have the, we bring the student to do the two day summer leadership conference with us and give them the firm tool, understand what we do. And then from that conference, then we select a few individuals to do the internship with us for the entire summer. Wonderful. I guess we could continue with your PowerPoint. Yes, yeah, so uh, let's start with my, can you see my PowerPoint? Yes, there Great. you go. <laughs> so, uh, so so I already kind of go over my career path. Uh, this is the uh, my first job is with Dill Evan. That's the uh, forty people accounting firm in Irvine. They specialize in governmental uh, auditing. And then my second one is the Satina Shasko. That's a smaller firm. And then I've been with Wine since two thousand. Wonderful. I had a question because I know you talked about you having your getting your CPA uh, certification. At what point did you decide that you needed maybe a, the graduate degree? Um, that's when I started at Wine. After I started at Wine, and of course, I'm, I started in the tax department. Mm -hmm. We have three different departments at Wine. One is the tax, one with audit department, and the employee benefit services. I decided to stay at tax. And then when I started the um, move up in the tax department, I understand I need more uh, uh education or more knowledge, technical knowledge on the tax law. And that's when I start my uh, master in taxation. Wonderful, thank you. So is your advice to either our young alumni or our students is to kind of find what specific, I'm gonna say industry, but what specific concentration, I guess a better word, they prefer before they pursue uh, a graduate degree? Like if they choose to get their bachelor's in accounting and then um, like yeah, you said, always, there's like real estate, there is audit, there's tax, like try right. work for and try, you know, to um, get an under better sense of what each of these takes before pursuing maybe a graduate degree. Yes, yes, I would definitely recommend uh, at the beginning of the career, you want to try everything uh, because you have to try everything in order to know which one you like. And I would say to be uh, to be successful in any field, you really have to love what you're doing, you know, and right. I, I can be... Uh, 
I'm successful because I really love what I'm doing right now. I love tax. I love talking to clients, uh, which we can talk about more. But I definitely encourage, uh, especially when you just start a career, try everything. Try um, explore to all the different industry, all the different uh, type of area. And then once you figure out which one is really what you like to do, then you can decide whether I want to pursue a master a graduate school because you know sometimes if you are focused you concentrate on audit you may not need a, a master so every every field every uh specialty or uh you know different area has a different um criteria wonderful so i'm gonna kind of get go into the uh the three why <laughs> why public accounting why tax and why wines um the reason I choose to stay in public accounting is because I love to work with so many different clients in different industry and, you know, with different um, business owner. Uh, I will say, uh, of course, public accounting has a very uh, long hours, especially in tax. You all know that we have a tax season. So from February to April, uh, you know, but we try to change that. Hopefully we can have more work life balance but you know just because we have a deadline to deal with so it, it's a long hour and it's not an easy job but uh compared to private private when you work for a private you have a more eight to five hour work hour more stay uh stable schedule but you only work for one company you know if you, you only know oh this company you only work for those uh the people in the team but in public accounting you get to work with so many different clients I have different i have a client in, as a manager manufacturer, as an import, export, e-commerce, technology, anything you can think of. Even some of the weird industries that you never think of. I, you know, it, it's just very interesting. I get to interact with all those different clients, understand their challenge, understand their situation. Like you see earlier in the video, you know, we don't just say one thing one uh, size fits all. We understand, we talk to the client, understand their needs, and then we help them. Our job is their advisor. So we're not just, you know, putting the number in the tax software, you know, and say produce tax return, that, you know, be done with it. We are more um, the client on the client side and help the client to grow the business and make sure they are successful. Uh, so I love I love public accounting just because there's a lot of um, also there's a lot of opportunity uh, in public accounting. If you are successful, if you do well, you can be an owner in a, a CPA firm. So, mm -hmm. and I was just promoted to be a partner in at Wine. So now you know it's it's really nice to have that ownership. Um, sometimes in a private, you not you know you may not have the opportunity to become an owner of the company, but in public accounting, especially you know, with wine, like our size, and we have, there's a lot of potential, a lot of opportunity for you to become a, a part of the ownership. Wonderful. Well, congratulations on being a partner. And I do have a question. I know you talk about like being able to service the various industries. Like, do you have, do you go to help your clients? Do you have to know about the industries or just very, very basic knowledge of the various industries that you're helping support? Uh, when you start with uh, in uh, just working with a particular client, you, you typically start with just a very general. Mm -hmm. Usually when you get to, um, like our firm is actually in the process of uh, developing some of the specialty and the specialty in uh, any specific industry, for example, healthcare. So now like we won't have build up a team. So we will have a tax team, auto team, and they specialize in healthcare. So you will see that a lot in the big four uh, multinational accounting firm or a national firm. They have the specialty in the specific industry. Uh, we are in the process kind of uh, move out there, but uh, in just like at this point, it's just the very general uh, knowledge about each industry. Yeah. And how do you keep abreast of like all the different guidelines and limitations for any of these industries? 
So uh, as a, you know, one of our daily job is that we have to educate ourselves. We always keep us uh, keep ourselves updated with all the new changes. And then so we subscribe to a lot of different uh, research database. Uh, so, uh, you know, every day we got an email, uh, you know, for the new development and sometimes it's very industry specific. So, uh, for example, like if there's some like oil gas, so I have an oil gas industry and then there's some special uh, program, some special incentive or, you know, rule about this industry. Usually we get an email and that's when we start, you know, learning more about the new changes and see if that will apply to our client in that industry. Wonderful, thank you. So next I'm gonna share why I choose tax. Of course, everybody, when you talk about public accounting, the first thing you think of is audit or tax. Uh, the reason I choose tax is, well, first of all, everybody has to file returns so if you have an income. Um, and there's more planning opportunity when you are doing tax, um, you know, and, and you feel like you are learning new law every day, everything. Uh, you, you, there's always a new thing to learn. Uh, when I say plenty of opportunity is that uh, just kind of, for example, this is really a, life, uh, a real life example. We have a client who wants to sell the, the business. This client has a six different company and three of them is the corporation, uh, C corporation, and three of them is the S corporation. So before we close the sale, we do some planning and we were able to, you know, create a model and do some analysis projection. And based on our modeling, we were able to save the client million dollar tax. I mean, of course, this is all like, you know, under the, uh, you know, it's, it's a, uh, you know, allow under the uh, tax law, but just, you know, just the, any, you know, the, the benefit of doing the tax is because you can think ahead and then it's, uh, there's opportunity for you to help client to save money. And that's very rewarding. Uh, on the other side, of course, other is really different approach. Other is more, you know, presenting the financial statement. Of course, they also provide value to the client, especially if you are a business owner, you're not going to know if you make money or not if you don't have a good set of financial statement. <laughs> yeah, so we will say really is the key, even though, you know, we have so many business owners, you know, they say we make money, they, you know, they rely on their sales force, their sales rep is kind of the first one that can make, you know, make money, you know, bring, bring, uh, customer in, bring revenue in, but they also need to have a very strong uh, supportive either internal or external accounting team. And that can produce an accurate financial statement so that the, the, the uh, business owner will know, you know, if they are really on the right track and if they got making money because, um, you know, you, you won't, it won't help if they they not uh, they not making money. So uh, so of course uh, on the other side they have their um, benefit and the value they can add it to the service. But on the on to the client, but on the tax side, uh, I feel like to me it's more rewarding just because uh, I can do a lot of uh, planning ahead of time and that really help our client to save tax, save money. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, so, and I just want to touch on a little bit more about our firm. Uh, as you can see earlier, we are the middle market accounting firm. Uh, the big difference between our firm and the big four is that we have, uh, we are, you know, we are very uh, family oriented and we are focused, we really uh, focus on the teamwork. And we are very general, so we not specialize in any specific industry or specific area when you start at once. When you are staff or senior, you get to do everything. You get to do uh, the individual, the business. Uh, you know, if you are the auditor, you get to do the test work on cash accounts receivable. Um, even though I never worked in a big four, I know in the big four environment, sometimes, you, you know, let's say if you start as a staff, you may just pull into a, a, a specialized team and you only do cash or you only do AR or you only do banking, you only do real estate. You will get specialized. You won't be able to um, have the experience in other areas. So the, the benefit about our firm is that we are 
uh, at the right size. So you're going to do everything. And we also have all the knowledge, the skill and the expertise that you can get from the big four. So we actually have um, half of our partner are the ex big four. So they work for, for big four before and they don't like the big firm mentality. So they went, you know, came to wine and you become a great resource for us and our client. So, and then we got the best place to work, just kind of share, you know, we, we are not just a CPA, we're not a boring traditional accountant. We actually do a lot of fun thing. We have the summer picnic. We have the, uh, actually tomorrow is our annual custom bowling tournament. Wow. So everybody dress up and we're gonna have a bowling and we have a raffle and we have a prize. We also have the semi-annual friend event. We have the holiday party. We have the fun day and we'll have, this is called a disconnect day, which we encourage employee just take a day off. Uh, it's not count to your vacation time, but just enjoy yourself, re relax, unplug, and then recharge, and then you can come back and re you know uh, do a better job <laughs> in the office. And then we also have a lot of in office activity like doing taxis, and we we provide um, coffee bar, the ice cream day, pizza day, and also uh, overtime meal. Uh, so I would like to share another uh, video I think would be helpful. Um, and it's great that you could see that whole team building collaborative. How did COVID impact that for, for the company? Uh, so when the COVID start is in March 2020, and it was a very uh, stressful time because that was right before, uh, the, you know, in the middle of the business season. But uh, luckily, we already have all the infrastructure set up. We were able to switch to everybody work remotely in a day. Mm -hmm. So all the auditors already have the laptop. Everybody is on laptop, but the, we already have uh, the dual monitor. Some of the tax uh, team, they used to work in the office, so we don't have the enough dual monitor, re, uh, portable monitor. So we get immediately we'll buy more portable monitor. We have everybody portable monitor with a laptop and everybody switch to work from home. Um, and then since then, we, uh, you know, I will say we encourage people to come back to the office, but we probably still, in average, probably 50% of people still remote work remotely. Um, but we are kind of adapt to this new normal. So COVID definitely affect how we work, but not significantly, especially we already have the system set up. Uh, and then as a kind of result of the COVID, with the remote working environment, we hire a lot of out-of-state employee. Um, so that's another thing, kind of like the, the new change we've been adopted to, just having uh, some of the out-of-state out uh, employee working for us now. Um, but one thing is that we still want people to come back to the office uh, because that really improve our connectivity and also productivity. Wonderful, yeah. So I want to share um, the, uh, I mentioned a little bit before about the summer leadership. Uh, so this is the video on the summer leadership. And next one, this will be the last one I would like to share. Uh, it's the. Um... <laughs> Uh, this one, I think Great. you will have a good. Uh, you will enjoy this one. Initiatives have been nothing but amazing. I couldn't be happier with our progress. That's really great to hear, Jim. The whole firm has really pulled together to make things happen. I completely agree. There's more that we can do. 
I'm not sure what you mean. I want our focus to be on connectivity and building on our amazing culture. We should craft a message down to its simplest possible form. Use a universal language to convey the story. Actually, we've been working on something behind the scenes. I think it might be exactly what you're looking for. Check this out. Exactly what I was looking for, Craig. The team nailed it. Oh, wonderful. You never think, you know, that a firm <laughs> would have that much fun. <laughs> Yeah, so that's kind of show you, we're not just a accountant. We know how to have fun. <laughs> wonderful. How funny. Um, and I do have two questions here that came in through the chat. Um, you're talking about disconnect days and they're just commenting how it sounds interesting. How many days of those does someone have per year within the company? So we have two day. We offer two day for the whole year. So the disconnected day, uh, you can take the one of them in the first six months, the second one in the last six months. And then that's, again, that's not including your uh, vacation time. And we encourage people, you know, just do whatever you like to uh, unplug. You can go to beach, you can go get a massage and also uh, take a photo. We have a little printer in our um, break room. So when people are doing something fun on their disconnected day, they can uh, come back to the office, print the photo and post on the Buddhaton 
board and so everybody can see oh yeah you you go to you know you go to the beach you do this and kind of like you know share the fun story oh wonderful so fun Do you want to um, pick up your PowerPoint? Yeah, can you see my PowerPoint? Yeah. Great. Uh, so next, I just want to kind of share with you my achievement. And again, let's kind of go back to the point that I love Papier County. I love tax because I feel like I'm helping people. I'm not, you know, just uh, working, the, doing the client work, but I also help many of my clients to get through this, especially during the uh, pandemic time. So one of my achievements is that uh, when the uh, COVID start, the government passes paycheck protection program loan. And uh, of course, this was like, you know, get passed, got passed very quickly. Um, you know, I have so many clients who applied alone, but didn't know how you operate, what's the requirement. So um, I was able to um, just get all the resources I can, educate myself in a very short period of time, and then start educating my client. Um, so then after that, I do a lot of webinar for a lot of nonprofit, for our firm, for our client, and also for our other organization. Um, and, you know, I help many, many of our client business owner get 100% forgiveness on this uh, paycheck uh, protection program loan. Uh, I would say that um, without this assistance from the government, all those small business owners really have a hard time getting through that the tough period, um, but you know, with the system, with our assistant, they were able to get extra money from the government to to keep their employee on payroll and get through that difficult time. Uh, the second um, additional service we offer uh, because the uh, the the COVID or the new uh, uh, law is this employee retention credit. So during the pandemic, uh, the government have this new incentive says, if you keep your employee on payroll and if you meet the uh, criteria, you can apply this employee retention credit. Um, the, there's a different program for 2020 versus 2021. In 2021, it's a lot favorable for the business owner. And I, you know, our firm and I also help many, many of our clients getting multi-million dollar of refunds. It's actual money from the government. It's a tax refund. So I feel very rewarding. Uh, again, that's why I, I, I feel like I'm not just, you know, doing my job, but I'm also helping the community, helping the business owner, helping my client. Uh, you know, like I always tell, tell my client, uh, it's nice we have this program. If they qualify, you don't want to miss it because this is the free money from the government. Uh, so um, again, that's why it's very rewarding. Um, I also help client, uh, represent client in many of the artists. And, you know, as in my experience, a lot of time, our client get panic when they get that notification saying they're going to be audited by the government, but I was able to guide them through. Um, and most of them is just like, you know, we can get the case closed very, uh, very smoothly without any, you know, problem. So I feel that that's kind of very rewarding as well. And then also I help many of our clients with different tax incentive. Like I said, sometimes this is just a, you know, give them free money, uh, free, um, cash flow from the government to help them with the business. Uh, so now it's like, you know, I, I've been in public accounting for 26 years. A lot of things changed. I remember when I started in public accounting in 1996, a, a lot of things still on paper. So we have the the paper, wallpaper. I remember my, you know, I talk about the first two years. I um, I do a lot of audit. I have to carry two boxes of the paper file in, and then carry my laptop. And then we also have the portable printer. You know, every time when I go to a client, I was like carrying a, a, a lot of stuff with me. And that's why I decided not to do audit because I, I was like a little bit tired about the traveling. Um, but everything's on paper. Uh, and then, you know, in the last 20 years, now our firm switched to 100% paperless in 2006. 
So now we don't even touch a paper. Like, you know, some some probably like very old school uh, partner, they still print paper, but very, very few paper. So everything's paperless. And just on the tax side, I would say, um, you know, you, you can pretty much, you know, from the preparation from the beginning, gathering information, documentation from the client to finish the tax return, send the tax return to the client. You don't even touch one piece of paper. So one, though, so kind of just give you an idea, like on the tax return side, so we receive, the, the client will receive the tax uh, document, the W-2, 1099, or, or the, any document, or we actually call, we have this called organizer, electronic organizer. So it's basically a web-based portal, the client will log in, and then they will answer question, upload their document to the the, to a portal. Uh, and then once they complete all the submission, we get an email notification. And we have a software that kind of compile all the information into an electronic file. And then we will start, you know, preparing the return. Of course, everything is on, on computer. You input the number in the software. And then after that, all the uh, review and then get final product. And then once we have the tax return, the final product was delivered to the tax return electronically also through a, a, a portal. So in the entire process, you don't see one piece of paper. That's something you would never imagine that would happen 20 years ago. So, so really, I think going forward, uh, especially in the public accounting, there will be a lot of automation. We rely on technology. We really want to free up any manual manpower uh, a, a lot of our uh, actual staff time like we don't want people and especially if you go through four year of college you don't want to just sit there and do a data entry that's not your job your job is to use your brain and that's a difference between human being and a computer and a robot is because we can think we want people to have a cre uh, creative thinking critical thinking and think outside of the box and we're not just preparing to return but we are offering more advisory services uh, like mentioned more uh, value acceleration um, you know more uh, on the advisory side uh, again I think that's where our clients see more value added uh, from us. Wonderful. And to kind of piggyback on what you just said, I do have a question in the chat. Like, do you recommend that someone get a degree in accounting? And do most of your staff at WINS have a degree, yes. uh, a college degree? Yes, I would say that's really the minimal. You need to have a college degree. Um, you know, of course, the master is a big plus. Um, especially on the tax side, I would say I really, you know, encourage all our uh, tax people getting a master in tax because in my experience, uh, again, just sharing my, my experience, uh, I got all the basic accounting courses in Cal State Long Beach and not very specialized in any particular like tax or audit. You know, I just get enough unit to get take the CPA exam. But when I start, uh, you know, working on the tax side, then I realized I need more uh, in-depth knowledge, uh, especially on all the tax law, then that's not why I get my, uh, I went to get my master in taxation. So when you want to get specializing in a certain area, then you may need that uh, master, but the, the bachelor, the, the four-year college is definitely a basic, a minimal. And then um, the, again, if you are interested in want to pursue in uh, being successful in public accounting, you definitely should have a CPA license. And I think part of your bio also, I read you uh, are focused on international uh, taxation. You know, how do you uh, keep up to date in those um, topics about international taxation? Yeah, so, um, and I think go back to the, uh, the, the, the thing I have or the, the subject for this presentation is that, um, you know, when I choose accounting, of course, at that time, I don't have any experience. I think accounting is easy. You just sit in front of a computer, you just crunch a number. Really, at the time, I was just like, okay, I, I can deal with number. I can do math. I can I can do accounting. But when you uh, get to, uh, to a certain level, especially when you become a manager, it's not just the number. There's really, you have to deal with the client. You have the customer service. And go back to your question on the international, you have to do a lot of reading. 
Mm -hmm. I never know that I have to read, do so much reading, especially on the new law and on new changes, and also educate myself on the international side. I have to not just understand what's the U.S. tax law, but what would be the impact to my client from the global standpoint. I have a client who can, you know, and with the global business environment, it's pretty easy. Everybody will go outside of the U.S. I have a client say, I want to set up an office in Canada. I have a client who I, I want to go to um, Australia, or I'm going to spend two years in U.K. What, what would be my US, uh, tax implications? So, uh, of course, when you just start, you know, uh, your career or you start working on international tax, you don't know anything. Then you have to start educate yourself, learn. There's a lot of reading, a lot of learning. And for me, and that's why I also like public accounting because I like to learn new things every day. And that's really the benefit. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, so I, do you have a couple more slides to go? I know we are up against time. But yeah, uh, so really, the, okay. this is the just a, a final words uh, take away. Uh, just, just uh, you know, accounting is not just number. Like I said, when you uh, become a leader, a manager, um, uh, you know, management, uh, dealing with client, you, uh, you have to deal with the client, being their educator, because. Uh, even you understand the concept, you understand the law, you need to. Uh, transfer the information or pass the message to your client because they are the one who's going to sign the tax return. They are going to be the one who submit your financial statement to the bank. They, they need to understand what going on to their tax return or the financial statement. So you need to educate them. So a lot of times it's not, I'm just sitting in the office. I just prepare the return. I don't need I don't talk to anybody. That's not true. You know, <laughs> you have to be an educator. Uh, you have to be a planner. You got to think of that even before the client asks the question. You have to anticipate what kind of question they're going to have, or you need to kind of uh, anticipate what the new law is going to affect them. So you need to think ahead plan ahead and that will provide the, the most value to your client. Uh, and then not just plan ahead, if you say, well, you tell your client, I think this is a great idea, you should do this, but you have to make sure it's executed. You know, you cannot just present. Otherwise, uh, a lot of time I tell my staff, yeah, it's good, you have a great idea, but if you don't do it, it just, <laughs> it doesn't make anything different. So you got to make sure you do it. And also you are the gatekeeper. You got to make sure your client is doing the right thing. You don't want them to go over aggressive or go over the board. Uh, you, you Sometimes you may never say, you know, I want to buy this car. I know this is a personal and business, and, but I want to like be aggressive. But you need to tell them, hey, you got to, here's the fine line. You know, you don't want to go, go, you know, get into trouble. And the last thing is like, you know, like I said, this, uh, Accounting, uh, this field, this professional is rapidly changing every day as we rely more on uh, technology. So you need to be able to adapt to changes, uh, be able to learn new things. And that's really the key to be successful. Wonderful. Thank you for that. So I do have, I know we are up against time, but I do have one more question from our audience. Did you have a mentor at school or early in your career if not, do you think it's helpful to have a mentor today? Yes, of course. I don't have, I didn't have a mentor at school, um, but when I start uh, working, especially at Wines, because um, we do have a mentor program, we also have a coaching program. I definitely encourage everybody to have a mentor. Uh, the difference between mentor and coach, the mentor is the one you're, you're sounding board. So, you know, you have your own goal, you have your own, business plan, you, you, what you want to accomplish, and your mentor can guide you to, to get to that point, to accomplish your goal. The coach, uh, again, just taking our firm as an example, our coach is more like, you know, tell you, you know, gotta, you gotta do this, you gotta fix this. So they are more on like, you know, hey, you know, get going, get going, get going. But um, the mentor is more, is more kind of, you know, your supporter. So I would say, yeah, definitely you should, everybody should have a mentor because then that's the one who can get, you know, really take you from the beginning to the end. Wonderful. And I see you have your slide up. Usually I like to end this with, you know, if any of our alumni that are watching are interested in connecting with you, uh, you have your, your email up on the screen, but also they could look for you on LinkedIn. 
Yes, yes, I'm on LinkedIn, so you can connect with me on the LinkedIn. And also, um, if you didn't get a chance to get all the information on this slide, you can also go to our firm website. So I have my own page there. Um, and also, um, just want to say, you know, feel free to connect with me. And, um, you know, just any question about public accounting, tax, international, I'm more than happy to, to help. Wonderful. Uh, thank you, Bella, so much for spending time with us today and uh, sharing about your journey, uh, your your job, um, and um, you know uh, just what it is to be in public accounting. And congratulations on the promotion and what a great career of over twenty years in in this industry. Thank you, thank you for having me. It's really my pleasure to speak with all of you and. Again, hopefully I can see, you know, some, someone in person sometime in my office. Wonderful. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. If you want to uh, learn about our future chats, please visit our website or follow us on social media. We thank you uh, for joining us today.